Well, good morning, Emmanuel, and a very warm welcome to anyone else who might be joining us this morning. It is lovely to be together for our Sunday service. Uh, it's uh, good to meet you if uh, we've not met. My name is John Shepherd. I'm the vicar here at Emmanuel, and I'm here in the uh, building in Broad Street, uh, Chesham. It'd be uh, lovely to be here together in the building. Uh, and we're perhaps a little bit closer to that day than we were uh, two or three weeks ago. But it's going to be a slow process. So keep praying. Uh, for now, on a Sunday morning, we're going to continue together online, uh, separate physically, but together, united in the spirit. And uh, some of you are together with others in your household. Uh, some of you will still be uh, on your own. But none of us are fully alone. For each one of us can know that God is present uh, with us this morning by his spirit at wherever we are. In today's service, we're going to be seeing some of the uh, members of the church family sending greetings, which is always a wonderful thing, including the treat of seeing some of our children today. Uh, we also have the great treat of being joined by uh, uh, Hope Church members Roger and Diane Welch. Uh, Diane's going to be reading from the scriptures. Roger will be preaching for this morning as we get back into the series in John's Gospel after we've had a little detour into Isaiah and last Sunday, our World Mission special. With thankful hearts, we're going to begin our service by singing together a song of praise. Led as always by our amazing Emmanuel musicians and singers, uh, the Psalms are full of all sorts of emotions, aren't they? But they almost always either begin or end with a, a note of praise. Even in the midst of struggle and sorrow, God wants to, us to turn our hearts to him in praise. Psalm 103, that great famous psalm begins, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Uh, we're going to sing, uh, and whether you want to sit or, or stand, whether you want to sing out loud or, or sing in your heart, let's join together with Praise is Rising. Come on your way 
Well, let's pray together. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Oh Lord, we pray that in our hearts and with our lives, we would give you the praise and the glory due to your name. Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence with humble thankfulness and a humble confidence, knowing that you love to, to draw us into your uh, presence. And we ask that uh, wherever we are this morning, in whatever place we find ourselves, however we are feeling, uh, we ask that you would, by your spirit, minister into our lives. You're a great and awesome and holy God. We are small and finite and feeble, and yet you invite us. And so we come in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you would help us to pray with faith and to listen attentively to your word, and to sing your praises, that we might be changed and that you might receive all the honour and the glory and the praise. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, how great it was to hear last week from our mission partners. I don't know if you saw the service, we're with us. Um, what a treat to see their faces and to hear their voices as we partner in the gospel with them uh, across the world. There's a verse in Psalm 67, I included it in the uh, Emmanuel News last uh, month, which says, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. It's one of our motives for being involved with, with world mission, filled with compassion, as we heard last week, reflecting God's heart for the world. We want others to know Jesus so that they can find true gladness and everlasting joy in him. Uh, we met the individuals last week, and, uh, uh, but I didn't mention the three organisations that we also support as partners in world mission, seeking to reach out and impact the world with God's love. There's, there's Tradecraft, uh, seeking to bring some justice and fair prices to some of the, the poorest people in the world for their produce, uh, all in the name of Jesus. Uh, you can still support them, by the way, by going online, going to their website, uh, David and Joe Lees will be able to help you if you'd like some more help. It's not upfront evangelism for sure, but they're seeking to make a difference in the world in Jesus' name. Uh, then there's Wycliffe Bible Translators. Uh, we've been supporting, you might know, the flame people in West Africa, a 99% Muslim country, but with a growing church. Uh, there should have been wild celebrations in April with the launch of the first ever New Testament and Genesis uh, in their mother tongue. But COVID meant a, a muted celebration, and yet a wonderful thing still. Uh, here's a picture of Pastor Paul and uh, his son uh, delivering these new Bibles in the midst of the pandemic. And here is a picture of some, some women in a literacy project who are using the Bible. Uh, a little flame girl symbolizing the future generations that uh, this new translation is going to bring blessing to. And we've got to pray that the, the rest of the Bible can be translated. And then, of course, here are some worshippers full of joy in having the scriptures in their own language. Uh, here they are worshipping in, in Pastor Paul's church. Remember Psalm 67, verse 4, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Uh, the other wonderful organisation we support, of course, is Fountain of Peace uh, in Western Uganda. A number of us have have been there from Emmanuel. We've visited on short mission trips and been richly blessed. The UK trustees, Andrew and Mary Shepherd, are part of our congregation. It was an organisation set up by Peace Ruha Ruza. And, uh, and here she is with a little greeting with some of her children uh, there in Fountain of Peace Children's Foundation. Dear friends, it is Peace here from Fountain of Peace Children's Foundation. Would like to take this moment to convey our gratitude to all our friends and supporters from Emmanuel Church for your unconditional love that you showed us during this turmoil moment of the COVID-19. Because of your support, we lacked nothing. We had everything we needed and we are grateful to the Lord for using you to reach out to us in love. And from all of us, from the bottom of our hearts, 
would like to say thank you very much. And this thank you comes from Sylvie from Colon House. Marcel from and all these lovely people and big man Alvin from Bethel Baby's home. To God be the glory and may he richly bless you and reward you for the love you have showed us. We are forever grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And from all of us we say, Thank, thank you! Yay! Well, how lovely to see peace with some of the older children. Each one of those children has a story to tell. Each one born into terrible circumstances. Yet each one loved by God, rescued, and now with a future because of Fountain of Peace. Whether it's East Africa or, or West Africa, the psalm says, let the nations be glad and sing with joy. That's why we give to, to world mission. That's why we pray for world mission. That's why uh, we are thankful to God for our mission partners, because we long that many more people might come to know true gladness and eternal joy in Jesus uh, across the world. Of, of course, we belong to uh, one of the nations too, don't we, uh, of which this psalm speaks. And so our mission is local as well. I hope you saw it on the Friday email, but, but I want to invite you tonight to the Zoom uh, Sunday night special this evening, seven o'clock, entitled Mission Possible. There's going to be some, some music and some interviews and uh, a short talk. Um, there's going to be people from various churches across the parish and, and Roger Carswell and Glenn Scrivener. It's, it's, it's there so we can be encouraged now in our own mission. And we look ahead to the Real Lives mission in October. So do join if you can. Do you want to be full of gladness and, and joy? I do. And that's my prayer for myself and, and for you. Let's pray that we would be full of that true gladness and, and eternal joy so that we will share Jesus with others. That's our, our longing, that others too would come uh, to know him and sing for joy themselves. Well, we're going to sing uh, of God's love for us. Uh, as we know, that security and joy in being loved, uh, we'll want to share that with others. And uh, so sit or stand, sing out loud, sing in your hearts. Children, there may even be some actions for this one. God's love is big.
rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? God loves me. But there is probably no more profound and wonderful truth than that if we reflect deeply upon it. It's time for the, the notices. Uh, and we have a, a bumper crop of greeting videos today, uh, which include some very special people, uh, starting with the great joy of seeing some of our children who we are missing terribly. We just want to say a big hello to the Emmanuel Church family from all the Eagles group. We're really missing uh, meeting at church and seeing everyone, but we're having lots of fun each week on Zoom together. So we just want to give you a big wave and say hello. Hello! Hi! 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 Manuel. Greetings from Ben and Holly. Um, it's been lovely to be able to join the services online, but we do miss you all. We've... It's been hard being in lockdown. It's not been easy, and I know it's not been easy for a lot of you guys as well. We've postponed our wedding until next year now, so that won't be happening until May. Um, safest option for everybody. But I know that everybody's done so well to get through lockdown and how hard things have been, especially with the shops and no football. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, the one thing that I have clung on to, Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. And I just find comfort in that, that he does know what we're going through and he does have plans for us. And everything will happen in his time. So lovely to see you all and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye. Good morning, everybody at Emmanuel. I hope you're all keeping well and that despite the difficulties of lockdown that you've been able to appreciate the slow pace of life that it's given to us. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again very soon and in the meantime take care and God bless. Hello, uh, John invited us, well Diane really, to do a brief greeting and update from Hope but she has insisted that it should be me instead. So greetings from Hope where as far as I'm aware, everybody is well. People have generally stayed indoors and well through lockdown where necessary. So uh, perhaps four bits of news for you. First, we will be partially reopening at the beginning of August. We're inviting those who've not had internet access or for whom internet access was difficult to come through the month of August on each Sunday and be in the church where we will be showing the uh, live stream, the pre-recorded video of the service. That would be for a, an invited group of people. We will of course be advising them as well that some should take uh, due heed of the government's advice to the over 70s to limit their social contact. Then secondly, uh, we are thinking about children's stuff and delighted that Hannah and Jen and Sally uh, working together on some parish-wide children's stuff for August. We look forward to that. But we're also thinking about what else we might be able to do with families somehow in August. And then uh, thirdly, uh, please uh, be praying for us as we find a way to replace the many things that Pat does in our life as a church as he plans to move on uh, to a new home in Hereford in the autumn. And finally, and of course, please continue to pray for a complete recovery, for full health for Jonathan very soon. I think that's it. Uh, thank you for praying for us and uh, thank you for taking an interest. Hi Emmanuel, it's Susan. I'm glad to see you if you're okay. I've been still working, hence the uniform. Nice to, well, we'd nice to see you all get back together soon. Take care, bye. Hello, Emmanuel, Moira here. I've been missing um, seeing you all, meeting with you all, but I have met with a few individuals, which has been lovely, and I've been out and about keeping busy. Can't wait to uh, see you in the future in whatever way we're going to do that. Lots of love for the week ahead. God bless, bye. Hello, Hello Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Greetings from the Johnston family. It's been lovely um, having Jamie here all through lockdown. Um, he's been able to do all his work for his youth uh, ministry work uh, for his church in Basingstoke from here, from his bedroom just up there. So it's been great having him here. And, and we haven't gone crazy yet. Not yet. 
um, and it's been really lovely as well. The last few days, Matthew's been able to join us uh, mm. because we've formed a support bubble with him. So we've, it's been wonderful all being together as a family for a few days. Uh, Ken is taking Matthew back up to Hull later today, and Jamie's off to Basingstoke sometime in the next couple of days or so. So looking forward to seeing you all soon when we can get together. Uh, God bless you all. See you soon. See you soon. Bye. 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 <laughs> there we go. Oh. Right. Hello, Hello. 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 Uh, I forgot what we're doing. <laughs> Cut. Hi Emmanuel, here's Patrick and his daddy. Patrick is now eight weeks old today. Yes. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the uh, recorded music and we hope to see you in person very soon. Uh, by the time you're watching this, we'll be off on a ho much needed holiday. <laughs> That's for sure. Patrick is making a lot of noises. He can smile, but I don't know if he's going to at the moment. He has given us a few smiles, um, but he's certainly talking to us. We're missing you all loads and we hope you're all staying safe and well and we can't wait to be back at Emmanuel properly. Bye. Isn't it a wonderful church family which God has put us in? Uh, how lovely to see little Patrick growing up, off to see his grandparents in Scotland for the first time. They'll be very excited. Uh, but we so want to meet him too, don't we, in person and hold him in our arms. And how lovely to see the Eagles group with some of their leaders. Uh, they weren't all there in the picture, all the leaders, but I'm so thankful to you volunteers who are, who are serving the children, even through this uh, lockdown period. Uh, we're so missing seeing one another, aren't we? I'm longing for us to be together. I hope you are too. There have been some positive things, of course, about online church, but it's, it's not the same as, as being with one another physically as a, a family should be. Uh, we prayed on Tuesday night at the Emmanuel Leaving Prayer time about our unlocking. And we've had some meetings this week, some helpful meetings. Uh, more information is going to be coming out next week. But, but the big headline is that we're going to continue meeting online for our morning services, uh, certainly through the, the summer, uh, as we have been doing for the last 15 weeks. Um, we want everyone to equally be involved, and, and being online enables us to equally be uh, connecting. So uh, you can even join if you're going away this uh, holidays. You can, you can tune in and be part of the service. However, we are aiming to have an evening service in the building here uh, a little earlier, at uh, 6 p.m., starting from July the 26th. Uh, it'll have quite a different feel about it. Uh, we'll have to be socially distanced and wearing masks is a sign of love for one another uh, in a very practical way. We'll have some music, we won't be able to sing. Uh, we'll be able to uh, meet each other, but we won't be able to stay around ages chatting, as I know we love to do. Um, I hope though it'll be an opportunity for those who are longing to be with others uh, to have that chance to, to be together. There'll be more information coming out more specifically about the plans and how we're going to do that. Uh, our greatest desire is to, to move forward in a way that honours God, that holds our church family united and together in Jesus. So please do be praying for that. Last couple of things. Uh, I've already mentioned our Sunday night special this evening at 7, Mission Possible. Do find the link on the Friday email uh, and join anytime from 6 45 so those leading can start promptly at 7. Uh, the children would normally be going out now. You can picture the eagles in your mind because you've seen their pictures. Uh, let's not forget the ravens and the sparrows as well as our babies and our teenagers. Uh, we're so missing you all uh, and though you're not heading out to your groups now I'm going to be praying for you right now. Let's pray. God, our Father, we thank you so much for the children. We thank you for the way Jesus welcomed the children to come to him. And he put his hands on them and he blessed them. And we pray spiritually that you would have your hand of blessing upon our children, our young people in the life of the church right now. And we pray that you'd encourage their hearts and then help their parents and families to support them and encourage them to look to Jesus. So we pray for your uh, spirit's blessing on their children, on their families, and on those volunteers who support and encourage them through the week. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to have a brief time of confession now. Uh, we're returning today to John's Gospel. And in our passage, Jesus says, The world hates me 
because I testify that its works are evil. You know, Jesus was uncompromising and uncomfortable in his pointing out of sin and evil in people's lives. Like a bright light shining brightly and, and showing up the stains and the dirt. On, uh, it, it, he continues to do that in our own lives if we allow him to, to do it. It's uncomfortable. And yet he shows us his love by calling us back to repentance, faith. And he demonstrates his love by dying on a cross for our sins that we might find forgiveness and cleansing. In fact, John, the one who wrote the gospel in his first letter, writes this. You remember these familiar words. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all our wrongdoing. Well, what words of confidence, what words of love. Let's pause for a moment of personal confession and then let's pray together the prayer of confession on the screen. So we join together in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. We find forgiveness through the cross, and so we're going to sing of that now before Miriam leads us in prayer, and then we hand over to Diane and Roger.
pray, let us listen to some words from 1 Timothy chapter 2, written by the Apostle Paul to his disciple Timothy. I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Saviour, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this reminder from your word that we need to pray and give thanks for all people, but in particular for all those with governing authority whom you have placed in those roles. Lord, especially at this time, when there is news of resurgencies of COVID-19 in many parts of the US and in places like Australia, China and Hong Kong, and first waves of the virus growing exponentially in places like Brazil and India, we lift up the leaders of all our nations, that they would be wise in making decisions about how to slow down the spread of the virus while balancing the needs of sustaining jobs and the economy. Father, we pray that leaders would be humble in being willing to listen to others who may have more expertise than themselves, and that leaders would have the well-being of their citizens in mind instead of how to make themselves look good or to keep themselves in power. Lord, we thank you in this country for the Prime Minister, the leaders of the opposition parties, and all those who serve at the national, county, and local levels of government. Please guide them and give them wisdom as they need to make so many detailed decisions in relation to the lifting of lockdown in this country. Further afield, we remember the people of Hong Kong still adjusting to the news of the new national security law that has been imposed on them by the Chinese central government. Father, we pray that the people of Hong Kong may be able to live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And we pray that the international community will continue to make known to China that the rights of Hong Kong residents should not be trampled on. In particular, we pray that the good news of Jesus would continue to ring out freely in Hong Kong and from Hong Kong into China, and that this new law would not be used to punish those involved in sharing the good news that Jesus gave himself as a ransom for all. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, we thank you for the body of Christ at Emmanuel and how you have called us to make Jesus known in Chesham and the world. Lord, we know you want all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. We thank you for those who finished the recent Christianity Explored course. Please will you continue to draw them to yourself and help each person to take that next step in having a relationship with you. We thank you for Virtual Messy Church taking place this coming Saturday. Please may it encourage the families and children who will be tuning in to keep learning about Jesus. And we pray in particular for the staff team and the wardens as they make complex decisions about restarting in-person services at Emmanuel. Please give them wisdom as they help us all not to forsake meeting together while doing so in a way that is safe and supports the common good. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, we want to lift up to you Emmanuel's mission partner, Claire Gingell, who serves in a church in Mostar, bringing the gospel to women and young people in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Lord, we lift up to you the leaders of Bosnia-Herzegovina, that they would make wise decisions in relation to the COVID pandemic, and that they would act above nationalism, self-interest, and corruption. Father, we thank you for the Center for Care, which the church started a few years ago, and for the three-ton potato crop they have just harvested. Thank you that they were able to bless so many families with food, and thank you for tending the crops with others has proven to be a good activity for evangelism, discipleship, and fellowship during these days of lockdown. We pray for wisdom for Claire as to how to use her summer well, 
without the big camps that she usually runs, but with youth who are open to the gospel, especially as lockdown lifts. Please help her to make good use of opportunities while respecting the rules about distancing. We pray for the church, that they would grow as they continue to preach to divided communities, that there is one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. And we pray for Claire herself, that she would be able to find some time for rest this summer to recharge herself so that she's ready for renewed activity in the autumn. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, we want to lift up to you those who are heavy burdened, especially those known to us who are ill, bereaved, looking for work, have long-term health problems, or are finding this period of lockdown and social distancing to be particularly difficult. We pray for the family and friends of Kath following her recent death, and for Lil, Jen, Jonathan, Ursi, and others who continue to grieve the loss of loved ones. We give thanks for the marriage of Sam and Jackie Yates in the US, which was still able to take place despite these restricted times. We pray for Ian and Catherine, Shirley, Jensen, Kathy and her daughter Carrie, Janet, Joy, Ken and Liz, Michelle, Cliff, Wendy, Andrew, and Rowena, Naomi's sister. And in these moments of silence, we lift up any others known to us who need your hand of comfort and strength. Father, thank you that you want us to pray and intercede for all people so that we can join together with you as you work your good purposes out in their lives. Please, with those we have lifted up before you, be especially aware today of the love and compassion of the Lord Jesus, who gave himself up as a ransom for all people. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us end by saying the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's continue in an attitude of prayer as we sing the words of our Nick song, Jesus Be the Center, as we ask Jesus to be the center of our lives. G 
Our reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, reading verses 1 to 24. After this, Jesus went around in Galilee. He did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to kill him. But when the Jewish festival of tabernacles was near, Jesus' brother said to him, Leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples there may see the works you do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. For even his own brothers did not believe in him. Therefore Jesus told them, My time is not yet here. For you, any time will do. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. You go to the festival. I am not going up to this festival because my time has not yet fully come. After he had said this, he stayed in Galilee. However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. Now, at the festival, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus and asking, where is he? Among the crowds, there was widespread whispering about him. Some said, he's a good man. Others replied, no, he deceives the people. But no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the leaders. Not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews there were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having been taught? Jesus answered, my teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Whoever speaks on their own does so to gain personal glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet not one of you keeps the law. Why are you trying to kill me? You are demon possessed, the crowd answered. Who's trying to kill you? Jesus said to them, I did one miracle, and you are all amazed. Yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though actually it did not come from Moses but from the patriarchs, you circumcise a boy on the Sabbath. Now, if a boy can be circumcised on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing a man's whole body on the Sabbath. Stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Emmanuel. Thank you for the invitation to share with you in your online service this morning. Longing as we are, I hope, for that day when we can properly congregate, when we can be ecclesia in the New Testament meaning of the word of God's people gathered together. But we thank God for the technology which allows us to do this. Uh, this couldn't have happened even a handful of years ago. This morning we return to John chapter 7, John's Gospel. Uh, you left the series to do some stuff in Isaiah 40 and have a mission Sunday and now we're back to John 7 and the beginning of a new section in this Gospel. And the title for the morning that John that's the shepherd, not the apostle, has chosen, uh, is from verse 24. Stop judging by mere appearances. On the surface, some words that we find easy to understand and relate to, even if we struggle to apply in a general sense in our lives. But there's a twist in this, and so we will pray and get into the text of Scripture. Father, this morning we pray that in this room where I am and in all the rooms where we watch today or on another day, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be at work in our lives and hearts 
to make your word plain and clear, to show the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ to us, and to draw us to yourself through him. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stop judging by mere appearances. Now, on the surface, appearance is everything in our culture, isn't it? Has there ever been a time when we have been so concerned about our body image, whatever it's like? Has there ever been a time when we've had, well, we haven't had before, social media and other media that focus hugely on the externals of things? People love to be what's called woke. And TV programmes are full of images of externals, even to the, the huge number of programmes about the design of houses, interior design. Uh, the design of clothes, the design of gardens, the design of just about everything. We want everything to look the very best. Go to an estate agent's window and look at the pictures of them, the modern, newly built interior. They look just so fantastic, so gleaming. It's appearance, it's external. And we are therefore prone to judge, to be critical to make assessments which are not always fair or right. This week uh, on TV there was uh, the pictures of a black couple driving a very nice looking black Mercedes. Those two things put together in the opinion and assessment of a group of police officers seeing them equaled a reason to stop them, a suspicion. The appearance suggested something that actually was very far from true. And that's around everywhere. And, and out of that comes prejudice. And out of that comes emotion and all sorts of things. Now, I'm not going to take too long on this because it's an online morning and we mustn't give too much space to it. But of course, Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, doesn't he? Don't judge lest you be judged with the same measure that you judge, it'll be judged to you. We need to be careful about our assessments. And that's what Jesus is saying at the end of this passage in John 7 to the Jewish leaders, the lawyers, the teachers that he's encountering in Jerusalem. Now, if what I had said so far was it, then we could take this away as a lesson in Christian living, as a lesson in our attitudes of what's in our own hearts. Uh, but actually, there is something else. There is much more that the passage is really about. The story is not how we make up our minds about our next door neighbours, or, or the clothes our friends are wearing, or how we stop being judgmental about people we meet in the street. This passage is actually about how we make up our minds about Jesus himself. You will remember and know that the Apostle John is a very focused writer. In his Gospel, he wants us to have the experience that he and his fellow disciples had. Uh, Realising that Jesus is the eternal word of God who has become flesh and dwelt among us. And that even at our distance now, unlike the physical disciples then, even at our distance, we can behold him full of grace and truth. We can reach in our own minds and hearts an assessment, a judgment, a, a view of who Jesus is. And actually, until we do that, we won't be able to make good assessments of, of anything else in the world because we won't be seeing through anything near the view and the eyes of God, of other people. So John chooses a set of incidents in the life of Jesus. Just a few 
from a, a huge resource bank that he has. He says that there's space in the world for everything that could be written about Jesus. But he chooses just a few so that as we read and encounter, and he's very focused about this, as we read and encounter, we might come to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that believing we might have life, true life, spiritual life, eternal life in his name. And so if it is the case that you have not got there yet, if it is the case that your judgments and assessments are made only on the basis of your own values and your life experience, pray that the Holy Spirit will open your heart and your eyes as you read John's Gospel, as you hear messages from it, I pray week by week, this message, this truth might come through loud and clear to your mind and heart about Jesus. So the passage starts a new section in the Gospel of John. From now on, John is going to have a focus on Jerusalem. Most of the time in the Gospels, there is a focus on Jesus' ministry in Galilee, in the north, where he came from, around the Sea of Galilee, Nazareth, Capernaum, all those towns around there. And from time to time, Jesus goes up to Jerusalem. But in John's selection of incidents, he's very Jerusalem heavy. <laughs> and this passage, only chapter 7 now of 21 chapters, remember, in chapter 7 it's the time of the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem. One of those feasts that the Jewish people had almost a, a, an obligation to try to get to. And so Jesus' friends and his family, his brothers, are planning to go up to Tabernacles. This is a great celebratory season, a harvest celebration and a celebration of God's liberty for the people as centuries before. A great time. Uh, so chapter 7 and the chapters that follow are this time of tabernacles. By the time we get through just a few chapters more into chapter 11, the whole scene has moved on through the winter to the following spring and the season of Passover and the final weeks of Jesus' life. So from here on in, the focus is Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is a place uh, of conflict and a place of danger. And it will be a place of death and resurrection for Jesus. For what follows now, I, I have just two simple headings. I want us to see that in this story, the first part is about recognition versus revelation. And the second part is about tradition versus truth. The first part then, recognition versus revelation. And this takes us right, right through to uh, about verse 20, really, of the story. So the brothers of Jesus want to make him a star. <laughs> That's basically what's happening in the opening verses. Jesus, it's about time you got yourself in the limelight much more. Your miracles are extraordinary. People are hanging on your words. In Galilee, you're hugely popular, but we need to see you doing this stuff more in Jerusalem, the centre of our world, of our religious views, of our freedom, of everything that it means to us to be the Jewish people. Let's go to Jerusalem and let's present you there and people may believe in you, whatever that means because for them they weren't even quite sure yet, as certainly among his family, whether he really is Messiah uh, or not. And Jesus says, no. He says, my, my time hasn't come. This is what he's saying is, right now, you putting it that way, it's not the right time. Jesus was continually battling with those who wanted him to move on, to be more popular, uh, to, to be, the, the focus for more and more people to follow. But he knew there was a time and it wasn't now. If he had gone with the brothers 
if he'd gone in the crowd, if he'd been the centerpiece from the, from the time he entered the city, then who knows how that might have ended up at Tabernacles. And that was not, he knew, the plan of his heavenly father. So he said, you go, I'll stay here. So they go, and then some days later, he follows. That's not a change of mind. That's Jesus knowing that there was a right time for him to go. And a time that would not immediately bring uh, such public acclaim and therefore such opposition from the leadership that his life would Im immediately be in peril. And it wasn't yet that time for God's purposes in him to be fulfilled. There's caution, there's hesitation. The leaders of the Jews, we know from what is said in the text, were, were already looking to see if he came to the feast, looking to trap him, looking to treat him, to trick him. But, but he does go and verse 14 finds Jesus teaching in the temple courts, not among the crowds, uh, not teaching the crowds or performing miracles, but, but in the temple courts, reasoning and teaching those who will come to hear. He's not with the outside crowds, not with those who are looking for the appearance, who are looking for the externals. He's looking to reveal the heart of God uh, in the temple. Uh, and so, uh, as you read the text, uh, it says, my teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. Anyone who chooses to do the will of God will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. Whoever seeks the glory of the one who sent him as a man of truth. There's nothing false about him. So Jesus is teaching about revealing the heart of God, reinforcing what's becoming a very common theme for him, that he has come from heaven, he's come from God, and those who want to watch him, listen to him, be with him, need to acknowledge that God is speaking in him and through him. It's a matter of not being recognised as a star, as a celebrity, as just the greatest one. It's about revealing the mind and heart of God from heaven to the people. To the people then, to the people now. And the, the argument from those who oppose him is that, that who does he think he is? <laughs> He's not qualified to say the things he says about God and about himself. He's a Galilean, we know him, we know where he came from, we know what he does. But in the ministry of Jesus, if you have a heart to know God, then you will realise who this is. This is where my teaching comes from. It's about revelation. It's about the revealing to the human heart of the purpose and will of God in Jesus. We're not looking to follow a celebrity. We're not looking to follow a star, a miracle worker alone, a guru, if you like, in uh, contemporary terms. However attracted you are to Jesus, you must not stop with a fascination to the externals or to is something of the glory even of his words. He says, my teaching comes from heaven, from the Father. Never mind the externals. We've got to get to the heart of who he is, why he's come. I wonder this morning, as we just are teasing around this passage a little, whether in your heart you'd have to say, I haven't come far enough. I'm still too interested in in the fascination and, and the question of who is this? Uh, and what would it mean to follow him? I wonder how great your desire is to know God. Uh, how great the desire to find eternal life. It's in Jesus, not because he's the popular star, the celebrity, the best one available. It's in Jesus because he's the son of God who speaks only what his father gives him, who does only what his father tells him, who lives whatever it will mean in the will of God. 
So that's the first thing. Recognition, the star, or revelation, words from heaven. And then the second from verse 21 onwards is the contrast between tradition and truth. On a previous visit to Jerusalem, if you were here some weeks ago, you may remember, on a previous visit to Jerusalem back in chapter 5, Jesus had healed an invalid at the pool of Bethesda, a man who'd been there for, it seemed, a lifetime. And Jesus had done it on the Sabbath. And the lawyers and the teachers, those who thought they knew everything better than anybody else, remembered that he'd done that on the Sabbath. And he contravened the traditions of the lawyers and the scribes in doing so. But Jesus points out to them in this passage that they themselves carried out circumcision on the Sabbath and they viewed themselves as being accurate portrayers and, and uh, people who followed closely the law of Moses, though circumcision came from the patriarchs, not from Moses. But they viewed themselves as obeying in the jot and the tittle and the details. But they circumcised on the Sabbath. So why should he not bring healing to a man on the Sabbath? The problem is, Jesus says to them, you're judging me by externals. You're judging me by the appearance of what you see. You're not assessing me correctly. You're not judging me right. And you're not seeing who I am because you're so taken up with these minutiae of your law and how it should be done says Jesus to them, you need to make a better judgment about me. Now I wonder what would happen if I walked down Chesham High Street this week. There'd uh, be a few more people around <laughs> than there was a few weeks ago. But imagine I walked down the high street with a simple questionnaire. Not unlike one that, that uh, some of us, particularly under, under Andrew's leadership, spent some time back last Christmas in the street with. But imagine just walking down the street and stopping people and saying, excuse me, but can you tell me, what do you think of Jesus? And why do you think that of Jesus? The range would be predictably large and wide, wouldn't it? It would probably go from those who laughed scornfully and said, well, it's just a fairy tale, isn't it? He didn't exist. There's no evidence because they've never taken time to look. Right through, perhaps, <laughs> to finding somebody, maybe a face you knew anyway, who said, he's the saviour. He's the friend of sinners. He's my Lord. He's my God who died for me and rose for me. There'd be a mixture. In between those two extremes, there will be many who would say, well, he was a very good man, wasn't he? I love his teaching. I love the Sermon on the Mount. Some of the best teaching any teacher in the history of the world has ever given. And of course, repeated by lots of others. Good man. But some you'd meet in Chesham, quite a few you'd meet in Chesham, would say that he was a prophet sent from God, but not the last of the, or the greatest prophet. Few might be as demeaning as the teachers of the law and the scribes in these stories who suggested, as did some in the crowd, that perhaps he was demon-possessed. Many of those views would be taken from a passing, external, appearance-driven view of who Jesus is. And so Jesus says, for our view of himself... Don't judge by externals. Don't judge by just a, a light touch. Don't judge by standing at a distance and admiring the view. Don't judge by even coming closer and suggesting something more sinister. Get yourself a true judgment. And to do that, says Jesus, you do have to let go some of the traditions you may have grown up with. You do have to let go of some of your views of what is right, what should be done even in regard to church, perhaps, to find truth. Do you remember 
the story in 1 Samuel 16 uh, of uh, the prophet Samuel being told by God that he, uh, for the king saw time was up. It was all over. He'd failed far too much. And Samuel the prophet was to anoint the next king over Israel. And that that king is to come from the family of Jesse of Jerusalem and so uh, and of Bethlehem. So he goes to Jesse's family and he goes through all the sons of Jesse, the fine, upstanding, handsome, tall, strong, developed, mature young men that they were. And the Lord is saying to Samuel, I'm not judging by appearance. This is not the one. This is not the one. This is not the one. And they get finally to have to pull the youngest of them from looking after sheep on the hillside. His name is David. And God says to Samuel, this is the one. The most unlikely. The youngest. The one who's not yet got the strength of his brothers. This is the one whose heart I know. So when we come to Jesus... You might think, surely with Jesus, it's more than just the heart, isn't it? Coming to Jesus, we have to be asking the question, who is he? What is God saying? What's the creator saying about this man? How do I make a correct assessment of him? And of course, in order to do so, you have to follow through John's choice of incidents to a cross, to death, to a cry of dereliction, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then to the extraordinary narratives of resurrection from the dead and the recognition in the disciples, this really is the Son of God. Recognition even in a centurion standing by, surely this is the Son of God. You have to follow through. So today, the crucial question for us is, are we judging Jesus by appearance, by externals, or by the Holy Spirit as our heart and mind being opened to be ready to confess with our mouths that he's Lord, that God has raised him from the dead? That's the real question, because after that, we can begin to understand how to make the right assessments and judgments of other situations because the law of God will be on our hearts, the spirit of God will be in our lives and we have some hope of making right assessments of all sorts of things and not just being carried by the crowd to externals. But it begins by not taking just an external view of Jesus but by bowing before him and confessing him as Lord. Don't judge by mere appearance, but instead judge correctly and bow before him. Let's pray. Father, today again we ask you to speak your word into our lives. You know our hearts. You know how confused and contradictory we can get. We pray for your Spirit's work to bring clarity and light and truth rather than tradition, revelation rather than just the recognition of the popular into our lives, that we might know and follow this Lord Jesus Christ, we pray in his name. Amen. <laughs>
in a moment, I'm going to lead us in our final prayer. Uh, but do click on the link and join others for the Sunday social after the service. If you would, it'd be so lovely to, to see your face. Now, if you're a visitor, we'd love to get to know you. Our contact details are on the screen. Uh, one last plug for the Mission Possible evening tonight, Sunday evening Zoom service. Do uh, join us for that parish-wide service. Well, let's pray together. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Can come unto me and rest. Father, we thank you for your grace in speaking into our lives. We pray that we might know and experience that rest in Jesus. And as we go into this week, we might hear his voice more clearly, that we might love him more dearly, that we might follow him more nearly day by day. And so we seek your blessing, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to be with us this day and this week and always. Amen.